This is Madonna. Yeah. Say hello. Hi, Lassie. You want to go for a run? Madonna. Okay, here we go. Well, I usually like to just walk in silence and not talk while I'm walking. But here we go. We're going to uh, a little spot in our property. I like where there's some moss and um, of course, the day has gotten away from me again. It's going towards sundown, but we still have some light out for another, uh, I think about an hour or so. Um, Madonna's gone running off somewhere. <laughs> but uh, I like to read outside when I can because we have, um, only about half the year that it's really hospitable to be outside here in Canada. Um, so, although I still get out in the winter. Um, yeah, so I'm going to sit in a spot here and talk about one of the, uh, a book that, uh, I just, uh, picked up from a new author that I love and uh, share that with you. This is an old Dilapoli dilapidated uh, bench that someone had built on our property that we still haven't gotten rid of. There's there's a few things like that, including a gigantic satellite dish. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. I'll sit here and talk about uh, the book. This is a mug that I got in um, Clarksdale, Mississippi. And uh, I'll be doing uh, a talk about that and travels and uh, how I love finding out about the history of place and where you're at. It's a New Orleans saying, where you're at. It sounds like, where's your hat? Um, but uh, yeah, so this is hibiscus tea that I got from uh, the closest trading post to us. We live in Al Algonquin land. Algonquin. And, and uh, I get uh, my herbs and my tea making from the trading post there, which I, I looked up to find when we moved out here. And I'm happy to have found. So um, that ties into some of the uh, um, what I'm into about land and history and being close to uh, what you feel from the spirit of the land and the culture and the people from it. So that's my hibiscus tea. It's very delicious and apparently it's actually um, very popular in the U.S. South and the Caribbean. Um, so yeah, this is the book. It's called Trail of Lightning and it's by Rebecca Roanhorse. Um, I'm not sure how I found it. I think I was just looking up um, something that was a good protagonist and uh, something that was uh, into the land and culture and uh, the people and speaking of place and also exciting uh, read. It's 
actually an excellent book and I'm glad to have found this author. She is uh, Dine, which is uh, an English uh, Navajo um, from New Mexico. And um, I don't actually like, usually, mostly, ever, um, female characters who are uh, frail or weak. Uh, some people are into that. It's okay. Um, uh, but uh, I like strong female characters. And um, I like this one for that aspect. And that's probably why I've read uh, um, mostly um, mainstream novels that are uh, action-oriented or um, thrillers, sci-fi. Um, mysteries, etc., um, with male characters because uh, I don't often care for how women characters are written, with uh, a few exceptions. I think Stephen King writes um, female characters um, with uh, with some understanding. So, uh, yeah. So we'll get into this a bit. So. The book takes place in, um, it says apocalyptic, but I think it's more like a futuristic um, alternate uh, future um, in the United States. In um, takes place in New Mexico, the southwest of the U.S., which I've always had uh, an interest in, and um, as well as... Uh, um, I've wanted to read a lot more by indigenous authors of our land because I'm very into um, wherever I go, understanding the connection of the history of people who have been in the country and that land and the wisdom they have from it and um, archaeology and culture and how they cook food, how they dress, how they live their life their uh, spiritual beliefs, etc., regardless of where in the world it is. Um, and this is just one area that speaks about that. Um, it doesn't get into it in depth, but it, it, it um, because this is a monster hunter book. So it's, um, but it brings into those, all of those aspects that I really love. Um, and uh, this is why like, it's hard for me sometimes to find fiction that I like because I like to learn about um, real aspects of life as opposed to like made up aspects of life. And, and it blends both of those. Um, so I really like this. Um, one of the words that uh, I uh, picked up and I, and I knew this about the, uh, the tribe that uh, that they speak of in this book is uh, Dine, or it's Dine, Dine. So I, if you look up how to pronounce it, I like to look up how you pronounce the uh, the words of a culture, and um, the home that her adopted grandfather that teaches her, who's a medicine man, lives in. And uh, I'll stop in reading a book um, if I pick up um, something in a book. Um, not always if I'm immersed, but, um, usually I'll, uh, I'll make a note of it and look up, um, Hoyan is, uh, the traditional house that her, um, it's not her actual blood grandfather, but, uh, it's a medicine man who adopted her as his, uh, he's a mentor for, uh, the protagonist. Um, and she has supernatural powers as well. And um, learning these things, it just brings a lot of um, resonance uh, when I read a book um, that's fiction and I enjoy, but it's also something that um, I'm learning as I go and it makes uh, it just makes it so much more um, real to my life, so.
So my dead wood the tripod fell. <laughs> we will persevere here. There we go. No. Okay. So it's gonna stay. Oh, it's dead. And I got a bug in my head. Of course. We'll do this. We will do this. Okay. Hi. Oh. <laughs> um. She's a monster hunter. She's not a detective. And I love detective fiction. Um, I love the... Um, uh, the mind. Um, figuring out the puzzle. But this is something else. And this is really um, capturing me as far as being... Um, getting into the wild aspect it's the other side um the protagonist um is a killer and uh she has supernatural powers and she will go to the extreme to do what she has to do and um i like that aspect of it oh what did i want to say About fear. I find that um, a lot of the a lot of the books that I've read, and maybe I've just read the wrong ones, but um, a lot of the books that I've read have to do with um, fear that's very uh, urban modern um or uh, perhaps i guess you would say not really anything that grips me it's like familial fear like i like Another genre that I love is uh, gothic and horror, uh, southern gothic, and, and that's an entire other genre. And there's fear in that, but it's it's very different. Um, so the natural world um, and how it has um, so much more resonance and like deep fears that a lot of I think modern people um, have become um, perhaps uh, divided from or not um, uh, we've, we've we don't we don't have a relation to it anymore I think unless you live in in uh, it, it, unless you've lived most of your life in a rural environment. Um, so, which is why I probably like also, um, which I go back to, of some of my classics that I like is uh, the old fairy tales, um, like the Grimm's Brothers. Um, and I'd like to find more. Um, I've been reading... Um, and I do listen to some podcasts of like legends and myths. Um, one of the other October uh, reads that I'm doing is um, Algernon Blackwood stories. But this one is is a modern author, and I like that she is um, uh, current and writing some really good stories with a great female protagonist who is a badass. And um, also another aspect that I like of this, and um, when I get into uh, talking about more of the books that I like, is that um, she, I, I'm only actually a quarter of the way through, but it's, it, it, it's great. And I've already ordered the second of her series. Um, 
is that she seems to be an orphan and a lot of the books that I read are people who are outsiders um, who do not fit in their family who do not fit into um, perhaps um, uh, where they live um, Albert Camus the stranger is one of my favorite books um, but uh, yeah it, it's it's a thread that goes through a lot of the books that I enjoy of um, that when the protagonist is uh, somebody who is finding their place but never feels totally at home where they are um, uh, not totally at home she's totally at home where she is uh, I should say is that um, she's she's a loner <laughs> and uh she's a fighter and uh she's strong and um but she also looks for connections um and i i like that aspect so this is a i really highly recommend even though i'm a quarter way through a really good read um it gives a great sense of place and um i i like a lot of the um it's very timely um I won't, I won't give the plot background you can look it up it's about it hasn't said how far into the future but it talks about um the world being drowned in water and uh how the natives have um made their place in north america after uh what has happened so i find that very interesting um considering how important water is and etc so that's uh that's getting dark so i'll say goodbye and uh this is madonna hi madonna her name was given to her by her rescue in Tulum, mexico because she was a jungle dog who had many litters as a very young dog and scrubbing for herself in condo developments <clears throat> for tourists around the Mexican uh, borderlands in Tulum. I found out about her after going to Mexico um, for a few years before that. And then I started following the street dogs from there because they would come to me and I would feed them. And there were a lot of them. Um, it's a very poor area and uh, many of the dogs are uh, not taken care of because people can't do that. But there's a rescue there and we found them. And when I did, uh, a couple of years later, I followed them and she was a mama. She had a couple of litters and they were... <clears throat> Excuse me, I have... Uh, I have issues with my lungs, so I'll try and speak clearly. Um, she, uh, she, she raised those litters, and uh, I tried to get her, and she always ran off. She was, she's a quick dog. I think she's part um, Australian cat dog, and maybe whippet. And uh, I actually ordered a DNA test for her <laughs> because you know I had to do that. Um, <clears throat> so her puppies were all adopted and I followed her and we had a husky that lived with us with our, our daughter who was very dominant husky and couldn't have another dog in the house and uh, so when my, uh, my youngest daughter moved out after she finished her master's degree Madonna suddenly came up for adoption and her name was given to her, not by the sing, not because of the, the woman who <laughs> sings by that name, because of the Beatles song, Lady Madonna, Children at Your Feet. So, well, we call her Donna sometimes for my short, but she's, she's a lady. She's a sweet dog, and that's the story behind her. We adopted her in um, 2019. And I can't believe how long she's already been with us. And she's the sweetest girl. 
Uh, so that's Madonna. So that's my introduction to her, and uh, she will be in more of our videos.